My name is Mike Poulter. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Uh, I'm the managing director for BMO's private bank in Utah. Now, BMO, uh, you're, you, which stands for Bank of Montreal, is a multinational bank uh, that uh, uh, has, is based in Canada, but it has a U.S. location and headquarters in Chicago. Um, new to the state, of course, but uh, over 200 years old, one of the oldest and largest banks in North America. Uh, we're, uh, uh, it recently acquired, some of you may know this, Bank of the West, so you will see an increasing presence of BMO in, uh, in Utah over the, next, uh, over the next little while. The private bank team in Utah, we're a, uh, a group of local veterans, worked at other institutions here locally. Each of, each of us has over 25 years of experience in, this, uh, in the business. We're proud to put the flag on the ground for BMO here in the state and uh, honored to sponsor a handful of Friday conversations over the next few months. Uh, we're especially pleased to connect with, uh, with Patrick and Black Desert Resort, which I was privileged to play just a couple of months ago. I don't know if you've been down there, but I highly recommend it. It is an extraordinarily gorgeous course, a little challenging for someone, a golfer of my, uh, of my skill level, but an absolute uh, joy to play, so I'll, I'll, I'll leave it at that. I do want to congratulate Patrick, though, and his team on uh, what they've accomplished and uh, success as well as they entertain the PGA and LPGA over the next couple of years. It's a big deal. So with that, I'll flip it over to whoever's next. Welcome to the Silicon Slopes Friday Conversations. Today we're here with Patrick Manning, who is a managing partner at Black Desert Resort. How are you, Patrick? Everything is awesome. Everything is awesome. We're going to get to that in a minute. Uh, there's a lot of awesome things happening. We were talking a little bit beforehand, and I asked, would you rather spread some of the awesomeness out over time or like have it all happen within one month? And you said, I'd like it to be like month to month to month, all awesome. Yeah, very highly condensed, awesome things happening without an end. Yeah. Let's start with um, the kind of the the vision and the story behind Black Desert, and then we're gonna get into some of the fun stuff that has been recently announced. Um, where did the idea come from? What is your role, and what do you do to make all the magic happen? Well, we have a great team. We came out, I came out to Utah in 2004 and put Black Desert under contract to purchase it, so it's, it's definitely been a marathon. In the meantime of uh, getting the entitlements and, and creating the master plan for what it is today, um, I got involved in, and uh, developed the Entrada project right next door and just kind of did that for the next 13, 14 years. And then we closed on the property um, in uh, 2017 on Black Desert. And uh, we've just gotten everything we've asked for with entitlements. I've spent thousands of hours in the living rooms of residents getting buy-in, so we had no, no real opposition to the, to the property, even though it's uh, the biggest resort in the state in the tiny town of Ivins. Yeah. So there's a lot of like uh, handshaking and kissing babies with projects like this. <laughs> there is, but it's sincere. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, you mentioned thousands of hours of like getting buy-in, right? Like there's a lot of, of hoops to jump through. Um, and I did not know that was the timeline. That's a long time. So, um, as like with most things, it kind of starts in your brain and then maybe a napkin. Um, I know it's an impossible question to answer in, in a short, condensed manner, but just try like the sequence of things you need to do to have that first T-ball be flying hit by a professional. Wow. Yeah, that'd be a long answer. I'll try to shorten it. Um, well, we have to start with a master plan and, and get all the great things that we want in a, in, uh, in a special resort into it, make sure it'll pencil, and then uh, get enough design done that we can go get buy-in from the cities and get the entitlements and development agreements and all of those sorts of things. And then you do a lot of interviewing of golf course designers and architects and, and select the ones that you feel will do the best job. And the golf course was Tom Weiskopf. And, uh, and his architect, Phil Smith, and um, we, it was a real, real joy uh, working with Tom. He's a gentleman and a lot of fun, and this was his 73rd and final course, um, so we're privileged to have chosen him. Yeah, what a career he's had, both playing and, and designing. So for, for him and his team, it's kind of like a blank canvas, right? There's rocks and dirt, and the vision is in their brains and it ends up on, on the ground. What is your role in that? 
Well, my role early on with the golf course uh, was I was pretty passionate about it, and we interviewed a lot of golf course architects. Um, but I have a few partners that are just t just, just nutty about golf, and they got so involved that I kind of saw an opportunity for me to just take over all the other stuff and let them focus on golf. And I just kind of stepped aside from it for, a, for probably a year. And then when a uh, conversation started with uh, the LPGA and the PGA, suddenly I took a lot more interest in the golf course and, jump, and jumped back in. But uh, I can't take any credit for the incredible design and, and the, the shape that it's in and all that. that that's other people. Yeah. So if you're sitting on a plane or if you're at a family barbecue and somebody says, well, tell me about Black Desert. Why did you guys do it? What's the difference between that and... Bushwood Country Club or Shinnecock Hills or whatever, I'm sure you've got a lot of answers. What are some of those? A few of those is, you know, there's not, there's not another place in the United States that I know of that has five or six million visitors a year and no true resort. Um, there's hotels, you know, there's condos, but there's no destination resort. So we decided to build or design the there there. So there's, when you go down to St. George, there's not really that spot you hang out. Do you go to the Zion Outlet Mall? You know, I mean, like, there's not a spot. So we wanted to create that place um, that has 20 restaurants and retail and cobblestone streets with no cars on them and, and, uh, and just really give the area what it needed. And then the next idea was um, let's, it's got to be big to absorb all those amenities, um, but let's do it as responsibly as we can. And so we looked into every technology for water conservation, energy conservation. Uh, we will be the largest resort in the world powered over low voltage, um, reducing carbon footprint by almost 60%, and all the, all the water conservation features as, as well. And that, that, there's proof to that because there's a third party energy audit that had to be done to apply for CPACE, renewable energy funding, and we broke the world record for uh, CPACE funding. It was 104 million and we got 158.4 million. And so it was, it was important to do it responsibly and not just big and fun. Yeah. Um, I remember when I was smaller playing golf um, at a, you know, public courses or clubs, uh, you didn't need to be a, a scientist to figure out that they were watering like crazy, you know, to keep that thing green. And, and uh, with each scientific advancement and, and those types of things, it's, it's less and less because you guys are in a desert, right? It's in the name. Um, what are some of those cool technology features that enable what you just described that listeners and viewers might think are cool? Well, low flow valves, the medium that we are using for the soils and everything is, is far superior than anything I think that's ever been done before to conserve water. We only need to use about a third of what you typically see. Um, and, and then just careful, we monitor every square foot of the golf course and we turn down the water and when we start to see it turn just a little bit brown, we know to dial it up a little bit, so we're not overwatering. That's the big, probably the biggest savings is monitoring uh, the golf course uh, to its infinite detail and then giving each piece the water it actually needs. Love it. And that does make your drives go a little bit further when the fairways <laughs> are a little right. bit. I love it. Um, and so there will be mixed use. You mentioned like uh, retail, and I assume there's you know, going to be single-use uh, homes and uh, maybe condominiums. What is the, the development like where the people are going to be? So um, when, you, when you come into Black Desert off of the horses roundabout there or going into Ivan's, Black Desert Drive begins to slope down and when you get about midway between uh, the entry and the main hotel, you're about 14 feet below grade. That allows for pedestrian bridge over the top of where the roads go. So the boardwalk is the first place you come to. That's about 250 um, condo hotel residences. It's uh, 15 restaurants. It's 100,000 square feet of retail, and all of that in uh, out, outdoor music venues. And all of that is enjoyed without having to worry about vehicles. Um, as you go off to the north, you get to the Golf Village, and it's centered around, it's 177 condo hotel units that sits on the two acre putting green that is a 36 hole, one of the largest putting greens in the nation. And that, that putting green, by the way, is where, where we tell the ethos of Black Desert, which is luxury without pretense. So just because we have a PGA Tour stop and an LPGA, this is a place where you can wear swim trunks 
and be barefoot putting on the green and, and listen to music. And anyway, so then we go south of the boardwalk and you come to the family village and it has the water park, again, done. It, it, we are using less water in this water park than if we had just done quarter acre lots on that same footprint, but it's bigger than anything on the Las Vegas Strip. And um, so then as you go into resort center, there's more restaurants, there's convention center, there's spa, there's the, the pro shop, of course. Then you go across Black Desert Drive to the other side of, now we're in Santa Clara. We're building a, I don't know how many thousands of seat yet, um, somewhere between probably five and 15,000 seat concert venue that swings to basketball. And um, a hotel wraps around it. And so if you check into the hotel and you go out on your balcony, you got front row seats to whatever's happening. And then that will have a retractable roof. And so it's indoor, outdoor. Uh, so anyway, there's, there's a lot going on. Oh. If you can't have fun at Black Desert, you, the problem's yours, huh? I would say so. <laughs> um, speaking of fun, like you guys uh, were talking about all the fun stuff. Um, there was a lot of not fun things that took... Uh, to get to that point. Um, as the managing partner, how do you kind of allocate your time, your team's time to kind of the, the dumpster fires, like this is going well, uh, we're behind schedule here, we're ahead of schedule here. How do you keep the trains running on time? Well, thankfully, we haven't run into a whole lot of snags. And I, I have a couple of construction managers that, that work for us that would probably cringe when they hear me say that. Uh, but there was never anything that was project killing. It was, it, we have had problems with not, not enough power, which is a big deal, but you gotta solve it, and we did. Um, but there really hasn't been any, any major problems. And of course, we're you know, wildly over budget, but I guess you kind of expect that when you do something like this. Um, but uh, as far as time allocation, um, I'm just really thankful that, that, that we have such a fantastic team. And uh, honestly, I'm, I'm able to focus on doing things like bringing the LPJ Tour and PJ Tour, which I wouldn't be able to do. I'd be handling the fires. Yeah. And uh, that's going to be like the funnest part of this conversation because if you like golf, or even if you don't, um, coming to an LPGA or a PGA Tour event is a ton of fun. And uh, I would be interested, we're, we're getting into all the details on that, but the, was this one of your guys' goals uh, at the beginning is to end with a PGA Tour event, or did it just kind of happen? It was not a goal. People asked uh, when we were first designing the course if we were going to de design it to be able to bring a PGA Tour stop. And I've had 500 people over the years tell me that Utah will never, ever, ever get a PGA Tour stop, so I just didn't really worry about it. And... Uh, but then, so we had to do a little bit of retrofitting to get the gallery through some of the tight spots, but uh, we were not, it, it happened actually pretty fast. You know, we got on the phone with the PGA, we had a really good relationship started, they came out and saw the course, we negotiated a contract, and we were done. Yeah. So that sounds pretty easy, but um, it's part of the FedEx Cup, right? Like That's correct. So it's going to be at a critical part of the season. That's right. And... Um, there's sponsorships and uh, and you know the corporate anchors um, from start to finish. Maybe it was that easy, but um, <laughs> how long did it take? Because it kind of snuck up on a lot of people. Yeah, I mean, literally, I, I don't think it all took. It took less than six months from the first conversation to a contract. Very cool. So now the superintendent, I assume, uh, is going to have a very interesting 2024 to get everything ready. Yeah, uh, Ross Lobsher is our uh, agronomist, head of agronomy, and but he was recruited uh, to go get the course ready for the Ryder Cup at uh, um, where was that? Uh, Medina. So he's highly used to big events and getting them re getting the course ready. Yeah, and so for those that aren't familiar, like it's basically a week long event with like the pro ams and things, but four days of playing and a field of hundreds winnowed down on the weekend. Um, what do you expect the, like the economic stimulus to be? What do you expect the involvement with the community to be? And are you pulling from Phoenix and Boise and Santa Fe and, and Vegas as well? Yeah, I think, uh, I think we'll get, we'll get uh, uh, visitors from probably eight hours out. Obviously, people will fly in. But um, we think there's an economic development according to the PGA and the information they've given us and the LPGA, the combined economic uh, Direct stimulus is about seventy million dollars per year. 
So that would mean you're, you're talking to municipalities and like the county commissioners and, and things like that to make sure everything's ready. Uh, what are those meetings like? Because there's different gears of speed in like, you know, private equity and real estate development and government. Um, how often do you have to kind of like take one hat off and put the other hat off and start speaking different languages? Well, I mean, I, I, I'm a pretty simple guy. Uh, what you see is what you get, a um, little bit of all shucks, and I don't know that I pandered to the, to the audience much. There is a lot of politics and, and all of that, but we all are playing really nice in the sandbox. The, the municipalities play nice together. We're in all of Santa Clara, Ivins, and St. George. The project spans all three cities. Uh, the county has been great. They are actually, uh, I was really proud of them. They stepped up and became a $2.5 million a year presenting sponsor for the tournaments. Oh, wow. Um, you mentioned earlier uh, you guys are avoiding the pretentiousness of, of places like this, whether it's a resort or a country club or a combination of both there. Um, it seems like that's what you and your team like. You just mentioned, you know, you're a shock straight shooter. Um, for those that have never seen Caddyshack, I, it's the best example I can give of like a, of a pretentious um, club, but that seems to be going away a little bit. But it's part of your guys' ethos and branding and, and marketing. Why is that, and how do you guys kind of cultivate that, and what's the ultimate goal in like making it fun and accessible? Well, I mean, one of the things that we did was set aside about 200 acres uh, right through the middle of the property that was this pristine lava flow, and we're donating that to the city of Ivins, and then we're donating others to the city of, of Santa Clara. And one of the reasons is it was probably the most valuable real estate but it was beautiful it is beautiful and we wanted to share it with people so we're building a, almost seven miles of trails that are internal to black desert putting up the uh, uh the restrooms and a nature center and we're doing all of that on our nickel and then maintaining it but then it's open to the public so people can come in and see the lava flow so uh, whereas it, it it is luxury without pretense but we want to be inclusive we don't we don't we want to do something really fun without gates we want, we want, Spencer Cox, Governor Cox said it exactly the way that I think of it, is he said, Black Desert is going to become Utah's resort. It'll become what people say, that's our resort, you know, and that's what we want. We want the residents to not feel like that's that big resort over there. That's our resort. So being inclusive is really important. Yeah. So you could wear your hat like this and play golf? You can. Okay. <laughs> And if your, sh your shirt comes untucked a little bit, you won't get yelled at? That's right. Perfect. That's happened to me both times. Um, all right, let's talk a little bit more. Um, the sequence is the PGA Tour first or the LPGA Tour f first? The PGA Tour will be the first week of October in 2024, and the LPGA Tour will start first week of May in 2025. Very cool. So did you do both those deals in conjunction? Or was the, were they two separate ones? They're, they're totally separate. We had the LPGA done uh, before we had the first conversation with the PGA. Okay. And as far as, like, um, you know, the community involvement with, like, the volunteers and the pro-ams, um, are you guys leading out on that? Or is there, like, a separate group that's getting that community involved? Because it's really cool to be involved in these things as a volunteer or just attending. Well, there, so we've already had a couple hundred people email us and ask us if they could volunteer, and we haven't asked anybody yet. Um, the World, uh, World Huntsman, not it's Huntsman, sorry, the, uh, the uh, what's the big tournament we do? The Ironman, the World Championship Ironman, they need about 5,000 volunteers, and they get that every year uh, because it's spread out across, across the county. With us being self-contained and just being at Black Desert, we only need about 1,000 volunteers, so we think that's going to be pretty easy. But on the, the other side of it, though, um, I've never done a PJ Tour event. I've never hosted a tournament like that before, so we're humble enough to know that we don't know how to do it and, um, and, and all that goes into it. So we've got um, Wasserman. Is gonna, they do uh, Grant Thornton and a ton of other uh, PGA Tour events. Uh, they're on retainer, and they've already started um, getting things ready for 24. Uh, so we have a lot of help. They have 1,600 employees, and we'll just take care of it. Love it. Um, I'd like to volunteer to, to hold the scorecard for the final foursome on, on Sunday. <laughs> okay, there you go. Thank you. <laughs> um, talk a little bit about your previous career and um, why you're so passionate about uh, you know, this type of development with resorts and communities and those types of things. Well, th this is, I don't know, I lost count, but this is about the 180th 
resort type property that I built. I've never done anything to this to this size, not even close. Um, but the reason I'm passionate about resort is twofold. From a financial side, um, I like to. I don't ever want to do something that has a comp. You know, th th you can't compare it to anything. So I, I would rather fail based on having big dreams and do something really cool than do what everybody else is doing and fail. So um, the second part is um, uh, it, it's just I can't think of a better job than every day we get to wake up and, and decide if we want to go stand in the lobby and pluck a family out of the lobby that's getting ready to check in and go show them some incredible things that they would have never seen and help them experience, you know, whether it's rock crawling or whatever it might be up in the sand hollow. It's just, it's, it's, you get, every day you get to make the decision to, to uh, really enhance people's lives that are there for that reason. Yeah. Um, we're gonna open up to questions from the audience here in a minute or two, so we'll get the mic ready and get your courage up to ask. Um, the 200 acre, right, putting green? Two acre. Two acre, I'm sorry, two acre, which is still gigantic. Um, whose idea was that? Because I love it. Because like, if you can't play 18 holes or even nine, there's still a lot of fun that can be done on the putting green. And I've had some of the best conversations and experiences on the putting green. I love the idea, whose was it? I, I think it was Tom Weisskopf's. I, I don't know for sure, uh, but we, we called it, we call it the yard. Uh, because it's so approachable, there's cornhole, and you know it's just it's it's like your backyard. So uh, but anyway, it'll be a lot of fun. But I can't remember whose initial idea it was. Yeah, but there's going to be like a, a putting course, 36 holes. You, you 36. mentioned, which uh, is the quickest way to get good at golf, right? So if you spend a year on there before you even swing a club, you've got a huge advantage. And uh, the fact that you can do it in a swimsuit and with your family, and you don't get kicked off if people are crying or yelling is <laughs> is really cool as well. Um, with the the PGA Tour coming, um, are you guys looking to do like a five-year, ten-year contract? How does that work? We're, I believe we have five-year on the PGA, which both sides agree we're just going to do it forever. Um, the LPGA, I believe, is seven years, and we agreed we're going to do it forever. Um, this is something I try not to do, uh, which is over-promise but we d typically accomplish what we, what we set out to do. But there's already some, some, some momentum on, in the very first year of the LPGA tournament, I'm really passionate about elevating the women's side of golf. And there's some momentum to have that actually become, uh, to replace another major. So it'd be a major in the first year is, I'm a little bit over promising, but I think we're gonna get there. I did want to ask that, but I didn't want to put you on the spot because uh, there's four majors. There's five, yeah. Five. And over the years, uh, for those that have paid attention, they have rotated in and out, right? Mm -hmm. So I think you can pick one of those. You can't do that in the PGA Tour. No. No. Um, but that would be amazing because that's a whole different level of exposure. I just want to share that I was talking with Wasserman that's going to be operating these resorts, and they said this is really good that you've got the PGA Tour going first and the LPGA second, because the PGA Tour is very complicated and hard to run, and the LPGA is easy. And I said, well, we're gonna make it complicated and hard, because we're gonna do everything for the women that we're doing for the men, and they said, you're gonna blow their minds. <laughs> so we're looking that, forward to that. That seems very fair and equitable. Um, how many people do you expect to attend, just ballpark? The PGA is uh, suggesting it's around 50 to 60,000 for the men, and about 40,000 for the women. Gotcha. Did you guys factor in parking when you we built did. it? We did. We've talked. Uh, Tuacon's going to help us out. All of the churches are going to use their, let us use their parking lots. The parks departments are going to let us use their parking lots. And we've got all the shuttles all lined up, and we've found, I think, enough. And then we'll have 1,800 parking spaces done by the time it rolls around. And St. George Airport's going to be pretty happy that weekend, too, I would imagine. And busy. Yes, and we're adding some stops. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. Um, let's open it up for questions from the audience. Just raise your hand. We have a microphone roaming around. I'm interested in knowing how you deal with the, um, <laughs> the fact that you've gone over your budget. How, how does that work? <laughs> going for the jugular. Yeah. Um, we write checks. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> so... The bank says you can have this much money. And we said, oh, oops, we went over. They said, not our problem. <laughs> you just have to have a good banking 
or you have to be able to write checks, one of the two. <laughs> Patrick, thanks for your insights. Um, so I work in tourism destination marketing, and obviously there's the outward component of attracting people to the destination, but also there's, you know, with any large project like this, there's both a positive and negative reaction from the community, and it, you know, it's just the, the ratio of that which differs between destination to destination. And um, I'm curious what the sentiment has been, especially in Ivan's and Santa Clara's smaller communities. Um, and you know, I'm curious to hear more about the challenges that you faced from the community and how you've dealt with those throughout the whole process. Because it was a long process, um, I had lots and lots of time to sit and contemplate and figure out underground parking and valet stations and shuttles throughout the resort. And, and the residents were part of this, you know, this, I, I held nothing back from the residents and I had probably monthly town hall meetings and invited them in and given them updates. It, I went to dinners and lunches and, and uh, generally the buy-in, Mayor Hart and Ivans, he said, um, how is it that I get hate mail from the rebel rousers and they show up to support you? And, and I just, I, I just said, I just think it's because we've been communicative and we've, we've made changes in our resort. We amended the master transportation plan to move an existing road on the plan into our property to, to, keep, to get it away from existing homes when that road goes in. And we've just shown up for them and they show up for us. And so it hasn't been that hard. Ivan's ha isn't really talking about traffic, for example. Um, St. George, which I haven't spent as much time with those residents, they're a little bit more hand-wringing, but they can also see it. Um, well, I had a city council member at St. George say, um, Patrick, this is terrible. You're going to just, there's going to be all this traffic. And I said, well, I don't know if it's going to be as much as you thought because we have 1,800 underground parking spaces and we're shuttling in valets and we're, it's a destination. We're trying to keep the people on the resort. He said, oh, great. So they're not going to come use our restaurants? Uh, <laughs> I don't know what to say. <laughs> yeah, there's a couple of tricky ones right there in the back. Give me a softball. <laughs> oh, yeah, this is a softball. This is coming from a, I wouldn't say non-golfer, but a terrible golfer. Um, and it has a family that loves to go down there. Uh, can you tell us a little bit more about the resort outside of the golf? You know, what's there to do? When is it all going to be online? You know, the hotel. Uh, what's the mix when it comes to real estate? Is there going to be private residences? That, that kind of overview. Sure. We have, um, there's only 75. So this is a roughly 3,200 room resort, um, which is about four times larger than the current largest hospitality offering in the state. Um, out of that, only about 75 are true estate lots, like three, three quarter acre or bigger um, lots. Other than that, there's um, about 2,500 condo hotel units, but you would never, ever, ever know they're individually owned. Uh, the buyers aren't, they're, you're not given a choice of cabinets or countertops or anything like that. It's a hotel first, period. Um, uh, and as far as the other amenities, we have the spa, we have about a 15,000 square foot spa. We'll have the concert venues um, and, and sporting venues. Um, there's the really world-class water park. Um, and incidentally, I forgot, to, thanks for asking this. Um, we were having a problem with uh, having enough power. So we looked into micro turbines and be, to run off of natural gas. And we're investing another $35 million into, into that. That creates a 61% reduction in carbon footprint and only 50% of the cost of, you, of the electric power. And, but most, place, most places can't use them because they have an enormous output of heat. And so we situated these micro turbines right where they could power the resort, but the heat emission is, is, is heating our water park. So, so anyway, so we'll have a heated water park. Um, and then the, the putting greens and the, the um, there'll be over 20 restaurants and shopping and all of that. But, and then there's an adventure club. I sometimes forget about that. It's a two-story, um, kind of like a, what's it called? Ben and Busters or something like that. Dave and Busters. Dave and Busters, yeah. Something like that. <laughs> so when will that kind of all be available to the public? Yeah, so a lot of what I just mentioned is going to be done by the time the, the PGA rolls around next year. So October uh, 24. Um, 
the rest of like the water park and all of that will be done at the end of 25. And then, you know, when we get down to Santa Clara, we're four or five years out before we have the concert venue hotel built. Patrick, just a, just a quick question. So how many, um, how many units will be, uh, well, I guess I could, the question would be, you're selling right now. These are condo hotel units. You're selling right now. How many are sold already? And how many do you, ex do you expect to sell all of them? Or what's the... Oh, for sure. We, it's a tricky question. I'll try to answer it and not take too long. We have more reservations than we have um, real estate available. But, but the, as people came in, they got a number and you get to select at that number. And so it takes a while having, helping people select their, their condo or their lot or whatever it is that they want. But we developed in-house a software uh, about five weeks ago and we roll it out where people get an hour window to make their selection. And it created um, almost $200 million of real estate sales in 30 days because it just forced people to make decisions. <laughs> so, cause it, so anyway, but um, we do expect to have no, knock on wood, we expect no problem. Uh, real estate is not a concern. Labor is a concern, um, but real estate sales is not. I'm starting to see why you guys are over budget a little bit. <laughs> yeah, we, I don't know if you all know what VE is, value engineering, so they bring you in and they try to tell you we can cut all of this money out. And the guy, the, our owner's representative, he said, I'm not inviting you all to any more uh, VE meetings because every time it gets more expensive. <laughs> <laughs> the end product's going to be really cool, though. All right, you mentioned uh, that timeline of uh, 2025, 2026. So you've mentioned a few things, and we were talking a little bit before, but there's the possibility of, like, some baseball, some preseason NBA, some amazing concerts, and that'll all be uh, in that kind of five to 15,000-person stadium, right? That's correct. So um, we are. I am working with the Jazz right now about the potential of bringing – the Jazz down for a preseason NBA game to be played at Tuacon. So we're working on, you know, how to retrofit the stage into a basketball court. But I've also uh, spoken with the Raiders, and it's a it's it's really a dream to have. We have the PGA, the LPGA. We're going to have the Jazz down there, um, and if, really for this resort to also be known as a professional sports franchise, recreation practice facility. Um, for as many as want to come. Are you getting any concern from like the spring training facilities that uh, they'll just want to like relocate up to Black Desert? I haven't told them. Okay. <laughs> I think I'm getting a drift of your style as well. <laughs> you just shoot first, yeah. ask questions later. Yeah. Yeah. I just love it. Just go big and then figure it out. Yeah. So there is some wisdom in that, right? Like it's, it's working out. I love it. Um, this has been so much fun, Patrick. Congrats to you and your team. I know there's thousands involved in this um and uh thank you for you know being open and candid on it it's it's been a fun conversation i can't wait to be down there hopefully volunteering um plug and uh appreciate your time looking forward to everything that you guys are going to do it's going to be a fun journey awesome thanks garrett yeah, thanks